to begin our service, we'll go ahead and turn to page 497 and we'll sing the chorus as the deer. And we'll sing through it two times. When you find it, if you could please stand. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Thank you. Oh, good morning. It's good to be in the house of God this morning. Glad to see all of you. I'll pray and you can be seated. And I'll go over a couple of things briefly. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time together around your word. Father, we thank you for the lesson we heard this morning in Sunday school. We thank you for the children that were here for Sunday school hour. Father, we pray that your word has already gone forth and touched our hearts and lives and challenged us. And Father, may we hear more from your word. And may you draw us as Christians closer to you. And may you convict the loss of sin. May they sense the need, the urgency to repent of sin and become born again before it's eternally too late. We praise you and we love you in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray and thank you. Amen. Well, good morning. Glad to see you here. We've got some special guests with us this morning I want to recognize. Tom has uh, done a tremendous deal for us, uh, installing security systems and uh, making sure that we had uh, things that need to be in place and uh, going above and beyond. And he's here today to tackle some more things for us and we thank God for that. And uh, you've been a tremendous blessing to us, and uh, we just appreciate what you've done and what you're planning to do and what you're purposing to do. And uh, those who are not here have that the churches that are represented that have done so much and uh, just above and beyond. And it's just been a tremendous blessing to us and uh, things that we could not do that God's more than able to do. And I'm very grateful for what God is able to do. I want to thank God for the Rivalo family visiting with us. And um, many of you know Calvin. I don't know if you've met his wife yet, but um, they were a tremendous help and blessing to us as we were um, at Temple Baptist Church as a youth pastor. Uh, they came beside us and uh, were a great influence and impact in the lives of the young people and were, were um, a great aid to me and my wife. And uh, they made things a lot easier for us. And uh, that was a tremendous blessing. Uh, good help is hard to find sometimes, and I thank God for good help. And uh, they were that to us, and uh, they mean a great deal to me and my family. And uh, we thank God you're here with us this morning. So I hope and pray that every, the uh, message, the Sunday school lesson, has been a blessing to you. Uh, do remember Backyard Bible Club. There's a lot going on there, and I thank God for it. We've had two outstanding weekends with young people in the community and um, um, people that have uh, family that has come and brought their kids as well and been a part of this. And it's just amazing seeing the the life that's taking place in, in the uh, children's ministry. And I want that to continue uh, long after the Backyard Bible Club on weekends of July is finished. I want to transition that to every Thursday night, God willing, that we have something going on for our young people. And uh, they may not be sitting in here with us. They have something kind of similar to this. What you see around us right now uh, would be in our fellowship hall. It was, will in turn be their classroom area. And we'll just borrow it from them every once in a while to sit back there in fellowship. But it will be their area, and prayerfully by God's grace, 
uh, we can see uh, many young people excited and challenged about the things of God. So uh, pray that God continues to work in that area. We've seen great things. We want to continue to see uh, great things. Isaiah is going to come and lead us in a couple more songs, and uh, we'll get into the message briefly. God bless each and every one of you. For our next hymn, we'll turn to page 418, and we'll sing the first, second, and third verse of Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Verse two, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Verse three, not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. For our last hymn, we'll turn to page 339, and we'll sing the first and last verse of Heaven Came Down. What a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows is spelling with joy I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Last verse. Now I've a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul.
filled my soul. Thank you. Amen. As we prepare for our offering, uh, please keep in mind uh, that we have the remaining Saturdays of this month for uh, Back to Our Bible School. And so I want you to be encouraged, be encouraged. I mean, we see the results of that already. God is blessed. God is uh, highly uh, pleased with what has been going on. So we want to make sure that we continue that, uh, continue our faithfulness in that, be much in prayer for it as we complete the month. Uh, but uh, as we move forward, uh, you may go ahead and turn to um, Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. That's where Pastor will be speaking to us from this morning. So uh, before he comes, we will uh, take the offering. So at this time, let us go to God in prayer and ask for his blessing on the offering. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your blessing that you've given to us already this morning. We thank you for those who are present. And Lord, we ask you would help our hearts to be open, receptive to your speaking, your leading today. And may all that's done be continued to be done to your glory and uh, in your uh, edification, Lord. Thank you so much for how you've blessed. Bless the offering. May it be a blessing uh, as it goes forth to further your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. want to forget our young people who came to church on their own this morning. What a blessing. That is a testimony that God's going to honor that. God's, God's pleased with that. All under the age of 15, got up this morning, got dressed for church this morning, came to the house of God this morning, sat through Sunday school this morning, still here for Sunday morning service. God is well pleased with that. I'm proud of you. Thank God for you and excited that you're here. Looking forward to playing some chess after, too. I don't know if I'll beat you or not, but we'll see. I'm excited about that. Uh, we're in Titus this morning. Let's stand together as we read Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, and to be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. And this is where we'll uh, put it in part this morning. We ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time together around your word. Father, I pray that the songs of praise and the Sunday school hour has already touched our hearts and lives. And uh, Father, encourage us and challenge us. And, and Father, help us now as we continue to lift you up and exalt you that, Father, you would hide me behind the cross and you would let your word do as you have set it forth to do, to speak to our hearts and our lives, to challenge us and draw us closer to you, to convict that one that's near, uh, that's full of sin and near death and 
near the, the flames of hell, Father, to escape the dangers and the fires of hell before it's too late. Father, we'll praise you and love you for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Where did God find you is the title of the message this morning. Where did God find you? We find here in verse three, he says, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Boy, sometimes as we've grown in grace and boy, we're living the Christian life, we can forget where God found us. We can forget the life that we were living before Christ. There are people that are saved and have gotten in the ministry. They're on the mission fields, but where God found them was in a bar room. God found them in a nightclub. God found them in places that we don't like to talk about, but that's where God has found each and every one of us lost and condemned in sin, doing what sinners do. He said, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. That is all man has known and being bound to sin, bound to the condemnation. So it's don't let it catch you off guard when a lost person is acting and behaving like a lost person. They're of their father, the devil. Hey, I remember being there. This, this morning, as we go through this passage, I, I'm not trying to uh, go back and relish in what was. No, that's not what we're doing this morning. We're not sitting back saying, man, I used to be this. I used to be in the games. I used to do this over here. Boy, I, I have a past. Let me tell you who I used to be. No, 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 no. Some humility here. I'm going to tell you where my God found me. Now, I, I didn't have a life full of alcohol and all of that stuff. I grew up in church, and I thank God for that. God saved me from a host of things, a world of things that, uh, thank God, my parents uh, raised me in a, in a godly home and protected me from a lot of things that many people have not been protected from. And I pray by God's grace, as God builds his church here, that we can raise families and build families that are protecting their children from some of the things that I've been protected from. There are people that are just dumbfounded that this pastor has never tasted alcohol. They just can't believe that. Uh, I didn't do that on my own. It's by God's grace. God's been merciful to me. Never. I just cannot believe. Never. Not once. Not ever. By God's grace. Thank God. I can say never. But that doesn't mean that I was pure and righteous. Well, I sat in church. I looked the part. I acted the part. I sang the songs. I'd run up and grab water for the pastor. I made sure he had a water at the pulpit. If there was something he needed, I was there trying to help. I vacuumed the floors of the church. These are the things I did growing up. But I was lost in sin, sitting in the sanctuary. Lost in sin, sitting in the house of God. Lost in sin, sitting under the word of God. Lost in sin and struggling and doubting my salvation every day and every night and knowing that I was on my way to a devil's hell, but trying to prove how good a person I was. I look back at that now and say, man, how foolish. What a shame. But I thank God he found me. I thank God he was merciful to me. I thank God he showed me compassion. Don't forget where God found you. You know, today it's easy for us to sit back and say, man, look at that guy over there. Look at how messed up they are. I can see God saying, son, that's where I found you. Man, that guy over there is so messed up. Boy, he is, he's just off his rocker. Boy, he's, that man's full of devils. Boy, that one over there is possessed. Boy, that one, over, there's no doubt in my mind. He is lost, son. Is there any doubt in your mind that you were lost? When I found you, I don't want us to put ourselves as if we are above someone else. I tell you, right where they are is where Christ found me. Lost and messed up in sin. 
full of confusion, no peace in my heart, no peace in my life, and wondering where, where if, if I could have what I saw others having. And I was sitting right in the midst of it. That's how lost and messed up you can be, sitting there thinking, boy, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of a people that's got it all together. I'm in the middle of a people that are saved and know God. I'm in the middle of a people that, but I don't have what they have. That was me. I didn't have what the church had. I, I didn't have that peace that passes all understanding. Well, I had a smile on my face and everybody thought I was a good old Christian boy. It shocked some people when this boy got saved. Are you serious? Richard? Yeah. I was just as lost as the murderer. As a serial killer, I was just as lost. As the rapist, just as lost. As the drunkard, just as lost. The person that abuses a child or, or someone of the opposite sex, that person, we, we would say, man, they're lost. They're messed up. I was just as lost. I may not have done what they were doing, but under the same condemnation. That's where Jesus found me. It's easy for us to point the finger and say how messed up someone else is. First Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. It says, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. We say, amen. Truth, no sin in heaven, no wickedness in heaven. But keep reading. Verse 11, he says, and such were some of you. Yeah. But you're washed. You see what God's grace can do? Hey, you were messed up. You were vile. There was no way you were getting into heaven. There was no way you had access in. You were condemned. That was you. But now you're washed. You say God can't change a life, you're looking at the proof of it. If you're saved, you're a witness of the proof of what God can do in your soul. God can change you from what you were to what God intends and purpose for you to be. And that's what God wants to do to each and every person that is living without him right now. There are some people feel like, hey, I'm living a good enough life. I've been doing good all on my own. Hey, let me tell you something. This pastor up here was there. I'm a good enough person. Hey, I've been baptized. I read my Bible. I pray. I help people. I do good for people. I do everything. I, I'm not living a bad life. How many times have we heard that? But let me tell you something. Where you are is in the trough with the murderer, the dope head, the drug dealer, the gangster. That's where you're at. In the trough of sin. Unable to get out and trying to justify yourself. I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. Hey, such were some of you. That was me. Lost. Condemned. No hope. No help. Except Jesus found me. What a savior. What a humbling thought. Don't, lo don't let us get so uh, high in uh, our Christianity that we look down our nose at a lost person. Because you could still be lost and it could be them that found Christ. You could be the one that's strung out on dope. You could be the one that your family is putting you out because every time they give you five dollars, you find meth or something to use it for. You could be the one that that is so miserable and so messed up and so lost that everybody's saying, tie him out there in the gatherings and, and leave him to, to himself and his own condemnation. We don't even want him in the community. Don't you know there are people that they don't want in Mobile right now? They got them locked up. And we don't want anything to do with them. But I'll tell you who can change all that. Jesus Christ. Hey, such were some of you. Where would I be without the mercy and the grace of God? Probably locked up somewhere.
But God's grace and God's mercy, oh, he's been good to me. Ye are washed. <laughs> you mean I'm not? Yeah, I'm not what I used to be. I, I'm not condemned. Ye are washed. Ye are sanctified. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Boy, we get in the word of God and, and we're drawn closer to God. Something's happening here. We're not what we were, and we're being taken further from it as we grow in grace and knowledge with Jesus Christ. Hey, you were lost when I found you. You were messed up, but not only did I save you, not only did I put you on your feet, not only did I put you on the right path, I'm guiding you all the way, getting you closer and closer to me. What a savior. Sanctified. Justified. Hey, not only did I save you, I went to heaven. And I had the blood that I poured out for you. And I presented it to my father. I said, this is the blood which has been poured out for the remission of their sin. What a savior. How dare we look at somebody and say, huh? I wonder what's wrong with them. I'll tell you what's wrong with them. The same thing that used to be wrong with you. But oh, what a Savior. What a Savior. To know that Jesus did all that for me is humbling. Romans 6 verse 17 says, But God be thanked that ye were, were the servants of sin. Past tense. Used to be. No longer. But you did used to be. And God doesn't throw it in our face. This isn't a, a bad Christian day. That's not what today is. Today is a reminder. Show some compassion. That person that you come across needs some compassion. They need some grace. They need to see the hope of Christ in you. And it, you may be the only grace they see. How dare the only grace they see Look at them like this. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We're getting a reminder right now what is wrong. Sin. Sin is what's wrong. Condemnation is what's wrong. Chains that they cannot break is what's wrong. But we know who can break them. We know who broke ours. We know who made the difference in our life. My father made a promise to raise his children and to be there for them. But he could not do that and fulfill that alone. It took the help of God. Boy, he found out that I was on the way. He dropped out of college. He came back to Biloxi, Mississippi. And he took us to church. He got us in the house of God. And 18 years later, who knew the impact that would have in my life? Well, you should have got saved at a much younger age. I didn't. That's how messed up I was. I was hearing the truth. Every service. But I was ignoring the truth. Every service. I was fighting myself, trying to justify myself and God. The Holy Spirit of God said, son, you know that's a lie. You know you're not good enough. At the age of 18, I finally acknowledged, you know what? You're right. I'm not good enough. I'm vile. I'm wicked. I've been trying to make myself look righteous. But there was a statement that was made. I wouldn't go to hell for anybody. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. Because you know what? I was going to hell trying to prove that I was righteous in front of people. Don't y'all see how good a person I am? What, what if I get saved? How, how are people going to look at me? How, what's people going to think of me? What are they going to say? I don't care what they think. I'm going to Jesus. Let people say what they say. But I want to be right with God. I want a home in heaven like they say they have. I, I want a mansion prepared for me. And I won't get that trying to prove myself righteous before them and before myself when I could be righteous. Many submitting themselves to their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. 
and they don't know what righteousness is. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. God be thanked. Ye were the servants of sin. Hey, here's a reminder, Christian. You shouldn't be serving sin now. You shouldn't be entangled in sin now. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's where he found me. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were automatically condemned. But God, verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, that's where he found me, hath quickened us or saved us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved. Oh, I'm thankful for the grace of God. For by grace are you saved through faith. And then not of works. It is not of not out of yourselves, it is the gift of God, excuse me, not of works, lest any man should boast. Child of God, don't ever get so big that you become useless. Well, I'm a child of God. I have a home in heaven. Hey, I, I sent you to go into the highways and the hedges and compel others to come in. But you're so caught up on yourself and who you are, and I made you who you are. And you have forgotten the authority and the power and the impact and the influence that I have had in your life. You would not be where you are without my grace. Yet we put ourselves on a pedestal on some level as if we are above those around us. No, I was right where they are. And deserve to be there. But God's grace found me. When I surrendered to preach. You want to know the, the, the burden that was on my heart? I said, how often have I heard this message? And there are people that do not hear it like this every day. I heard it every week. Every, every service, the gospel preached. Every time, the gospel preached. Simply put, the gospel preached. How often did I ignore it? How many chances did God give me? And oh, that poor soul out there that may only hear it but one time. God put a burden on my heart. I heard Brother Bill Riddick years ago. It's probably been 20 years ago now. He was in the pulpit and he said, some of you young guys in here, you think you may be called to preach? Go preach. Preaching the jails. That'll prove you. I heard that. And God had been dealing with my heart. And he continued to deal with me some more. I didn't answer immediately. But when I did, I quietly, without anyone knowing, I went in the jails and opened my Bible and started preaching. And that'll prove you. It will. When a lieutenant sits there and takes you in a room with 50 grown men and he's giving you a tour of the facilities and these men sit up from their bunks and they begin to look at you. <laughs> and I don't, the Holy Spirit of God was in it is all I know. I said, hey, you're giving me a tour. Can I give you a tour? Do what? He, he didn't like that too much. 
I said, yeah, this is, you know, let's give each other a tour. Let me show you what I'm going to do when I come in. I said, okay. And I could hear it in his voice. He did not like it. And I turned and started addressing the guys. Good morning. I'm Brother Richard and rah, 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 rah. I've got a hymn book and we're going to sing a few songs. And I'm going to read a few verses to you. And I heard behind me a metal door go, boom. And I said, and, uh, and I don't know how long the pause was. I don't know. I looked here. And the three guards that were there weren't there anymore. And I began to look in the corners. And there's no guard. There's a camera, but I don't know if they're watching it. Uh, it was put up or shut up. God was proving me. Ten men got saved that morning. I had no idea. But you want to know those men were right where God found me? Messed up. And all it takes is a person with some compassion to make a difference. Our Savior had compassion. And look at the difference he's made. The impact. I don't know if I've seen one of those men ever since or where they are. As I preached in, in the juvenile detention centers and, and ministered to those young people, there were some that I would see quite often. And there were some I never saw again. I don't know where they are or what they may be doing or how God may be using them. I may not know till we're on the other side of eternity. I may not know. But I tell you what, you let God use you for his honor and his glory. God wants to use you. You know, we see people get saved. And we expect immediate maturity. But remember how long it's taken God to grow you? You remember all the work God's put into you? You remember how much digging and how much and people have invested in you? You didn't just arrive. I didn't just get here. People invested in my life. People have, have gotten around me and worked with me and labored with me and, and prayed over me and cared for me. And I, I have benefited because of that. Well, if we would take the time to do that for someone else, who would benefit? The lost are exactly where we used to be. The lost are exactly who we used to be. The lost have the same potential to be who we are today. With some help from laborers, they just might get saved. And when they get saved, they still may not be where you are right now, but by God's grace. <laughs> by God's grace. When I was a youth pastor, we did a, a series on plants. And we gave them one water, and it was growing, and it was doing well. And we gave the other everything it didn't need. I think we put, were you there for that, Calvin, when we did that? The, the Gatorade and uh, transmission fluid or whatever. We put some of everything on it. And those kids, their faces, you could see it all. I said, well, that's what some of you are doing in your lives today. And that thing began to wither and to die. And I'll never forget those kids coming to me. Brother Richard, can we please, <laughs> can we please revive this plant? Can we please give it some water? You know what I started praying? God, would you please let this thing grow for these kids? Would you let them see it? When I tell you that plant that was dying began to outshine the one that was growing consistently. I mean, the leaves came back so full. You know what that tells me? We can get stagnant in our relationship with Christ. We can get to a point where we feel like we're somewhere where we should be and we have arrived. And somebody can pass you up because they're genuine and they're sincere. Not saying you haven't been genuine, but they really want something. And it's showing in their lives. Well, that thing was so messed up when we pulled it out. We, we removed it from the pot it was in to put it in another. And half of the root system stayed in there, I thought. There's no way. There's no way. And we place it in this other pot and begin to water it. And it didn't take long. Those kids were so excited. I think that was one of the series that impacted them the most because they saw what God's grace can do. It was right there before their eyes. We would bring it in 
every service and said it at the pulpit. And they could see it. There was no denying what happens when you allow sin. And there are Christians who allow sin into their hearts and lives and they grow stagnant. They're not growing. Their leaves look darker than this pretty one over here that was messed up. It was once messed up. But it's flourishing now because it's genuinely trying and striving and, and thriving. Well, that's where I want to be. So I was messed up. Yeah, I was. Such were some of you. I'll admit I was messed up. I'll admit my fault. I'll admit I needed my Savior. And that'll be the one that flourishes. The one that remembers in his mind, that was me. Let me get out here and do what I can to help him. Let me do what I can to be a blessing to him. We can't expect him to immediately mature. It didn't happen overnight. No, that root system, it takes time to, to regain strength and to spread and to grow and to, to dig into the earth. If one of the kids had come up and knocked the plant down, it would have fell over. That would have been it. But working with it. And knowing that, no, you're, you're not there yet. You can't handle strong meat just yet. But let's stay in the milk of the word for a little while. Let's strengthen you. Let's, let's get you to growing in God's grace and knowledge. 2 Timothy 2.14 says, Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. See, we want to see people saved. There were young people that didn't know how to soul win. Well, let's go. <laughs> let's go knock some doors. Let's go talk to people. Let's get out there. The best way to teach is to do. The best way to, to show someone is to go do it with them. This is how I don't learn by sitting in a classroom and writing. No, I, I can't do that. I, I just, I got to put my hands on it. I, I, I've got to, okay, let me, show me what we're doing here. Show me. And you'll show them more than you could ever teach them with your mouth. Now, some people may learn and pick it up that way. Not me. I, I'm not that guy. I, I know my limitations and I have to see. Second Timothy 2 verse 16, but shun profane and vain babblings for, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. See, there are some things that we've got to be careful what comes into the house of God because there's some false teachings that people are teaching in, in, in the pulpit and it's messing people up. And instead of thriving and growing and getting where they need to be, they're still kind of messed up. No, they're not lost. They're not condemned, but they're not growing in God's grace because you're giving them something they don't need. You got to be careful what we're hearing and remind them and challenge them and encourage them and develop them and watch God work in their lives. We're in this thing to see souls saved. We're in this thing to see lives changed. There are people that have gotten saved and they didn't really come out of the life that they're living. They kind of stayed out there. Now they're saved. I believe they got saved. There's a man that made a profession of faith the other day, said he got saved and he came up to me later and he thanked me, tear in his eye. He thank you. Thank you, preacher. Thank you. And by God's grace, we'll see him one day. But until we can get him in here and get him in the word of God, he's not really growing yet. He still knows that stuff out there. We got to get him in the word of God under the things of God and under the guidance and the direction of God so he can see, hey, 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 I've been seeing with the wrong eyes. I, I, I've been seeing things wrong. I, I've been hearing wrong. I, I, I haven't heard what I should be hearing. We got to get people under the word of God. We got to get them. It bothers me when someone acts as if they've got it all together now. And don't have time for those who don't have it all together. Because I remember when there was a point in my life where I didn't have it all together. Hey, reality check, I don't have it all together now. Paul said, I pressed toward the mark. I haven't attained. I, 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 I'm not as Christ is right now. I'm striving to be more like him. Boy, I see more and more of myself. Every God is revealing me to me all the time. And the more I see of me, I say, how vile 
all I am. How messed up I am. Oh God, I hate what I see of me. The more you get in God's word, the more you'll see that. The more you'll realize you haven't arrived. So don't act like they should have arrived by now. Well, they messed up again. Yeah, let's let's get behind them. But they did this again. Yeah, let's let's do our part. You remember how much digging Christ had done around you? He could have said, cut it down, walk number 50 around. But somebody was praying for you. Who are you praying for? Now, many have tried to be righteous and love themselves. I've seen numerous times where people said, I'm going to send my kids to church. <laughs> yeah, my kids need Jesus. My wife needs Jesus. My husband needs Jesus, but I'm good. You know that I'm good over here with what I got, but my whole family needs to be in the church. They need to be, boy, they need this right here. I've had people I'm talking to, man, those young people down there, they need them. Man, what's that in your hand right there? That, 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 that needs to go. You need him too. I needed him. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you're messed up, but you don't see it that way. You think you got it all together. And there are many people who have been blinded and they got their stuff and they feel like, yeah, everybody else is messed up, but I'm good. That was me. Such were some of you. Messed up. Thinking I had it all together. I can't look down at them, but I can tell them, hey, this isn't what should be. That rich young ruler came to Jesus. And he went down a list of all his accolades. And Jesus said, yet one thing now lacks. Well, wait a minute. I, I've kept all these things from my youth. I'm a good person. I've been doing. Well, one thing now lacks. And he wouldn't do that one thing. Well, wait a minute. I, I, I have too many riches to, to sell all and, and give to the poor and follow you. Well, that's what I'm telling you you need to do. You need to get rid of that stuff in your life. You need to surrender to me and follow me and yield to me and let me work in your life. Accept me as your Lord and Savior. And he was unwilling to do that. And he went away sad, grieved. Why? Because he was unwilling to acknowledge what he needed. The Pharisee and the publican. One went in, the Pharisee went in talking about how good a person he was. I'm not like this man. I, I tithe, I give to the poor, and I do this, and I do that, and rah, 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 rah. All our accolades, God just said, I, I hear what you're saying, but that means nothing to me. You're just talking. I tell you what's important to me. I tell you what's important to me, and it's the blood of my son. I don't hear anything about that. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I still see sin all over you. And that one man sitting there, that publican, wouldn't even look up to heaven. Wouldn't even uh, uh, look up towards God. But he acknowledged his wickedness, his sin, and how vile and how wicked he was. Save me a sinner. And that one was the one that God could help. You know, you're not going to get there until you humble down and realize, you know, I really need Jesus. I had to acknowledge that I really need Jesus. I needed him in my life. God helps the helpless. He said, I came not to call the right the righteous, but the sinner to repentance. I came to seek and to save that which was lost. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came for the one that acknowledges I'm sick. I'm messed up. There are people that go to the doctor's office. The doctor says, if you don't stop this, you're going to do this right here. You're going to do that right there. You're going to have a stroke. Oh, no, nothing's wrong with me, doctor. I'm good. I'm trying to tell you, if you don't change your ways, if you don't change your diet, if you don't get to exercising, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, you're going to have a stroke. No, I am good, doctor. I'm going to have a stroke sitting right there because he gets so upset with the doctor. And all they had to do was acknowledge the truth. The truth is right here in front of you. Without Christ... I don't care how good a person you think you are. I don't care how much of your good outweighs your bad. Without Christ, it doesn't matter how perfect a person you think you are. Without Christ, your righteousness is nothing. And hey, I was right there with you. But with Christ, 
He makes you righteous. Oh, he'll justify you. He'll cleanse you. He'll sanctify you. He'll do things and carry you places you never saw yourself going. You couldn't. You couldn't see it because you were blind to the righteousness of Christ. But I'm telling you, as many as received him, to them, he says, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Right where God found you is where God is working in other people's lives. That same trough of sin, that same wicked condemnation, Jesus is sitting there shining a light. Hey, don't you see me? Don't, don't you see me right here? I'm, I'm trying to help you. Don't you see how lost and how messed up you are? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Won't you come? Won't you repent? Won't you turn from that? You think you can get out of that on your own. You can't. But I can do far more exceedingly than you ever could if you just simply receive me. If you just simply accept me, I'll save you. Well, you know, when I got the help I needed, when I stopped acting like I was doing it on my own, when I stopped acting like I'm a good enough person, when I stopped acting like my good outweighed my bad, when I stopped acting like everything I was doing in the church was good enough, when I acknowledged that I'm vile, I'm wicked, I'm lost, I am hell bound, and I need Jesus. That's when I got the help I needed because I said, Lord, save me. Have mercy on me. I'll never forget crying in my parents' van outside the church, begging God to save me. I'll never forget it. I'll never, ever, ever forget it. I bumped into someone running out the hallway to get to the vehicle. I don't know who to this day who I bumped into. I mean, I know to heaven. They were trying to stop me to talk. There's nothing to talk about right now. I have just acknowledged how lost I am. And I'm in a state that this has got to be fixed right now. See, that person, that's the one that God can help. That's the one that God can save. But if you sit in there seeing yourself, oh, I got it all figured out. I'm good enough. You're not there yet. And it's going to take God getting you there. Because no matter how long and how hard or how loud I preach, I can't get you there. You got to see it for yourself. And Jesus, this is the thing about him. He, he's patient. He's loving. But that clock's ticking. The night I got saved, I felt like if I had not repented that night, I wouldn't have lived to see another one. God told me that night, son, I've given you your last warning. That broke me. Oh, that 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 did things to me that I just my la my la la last. This is it. Deal with it now. But this is it. I don't know if at the age of eighteen, had I not received Christ that night, if I had lived to see the next day. I do not know. I may find out in heaven one day. But that was the conviction I was under when I got saved. There's no time to play games. No time to play around. No time to mix words. I got to do business with God. And I hope and pray if that's what it takes for God to get you there, that God does it sooner than later. Because I want you to be where I am today. I want you to go further than where I've gone. I want you to thrive for God. But you can't do that until you acknowledge, number one, I'm a sinner. I had to acknowledge the same thing. Many will see themselves righteous, but God is faithful. Where God found me, lost sinner, is undoubtedly where God will find you. That's where he'll find you. He'll not leave you there. He will not leave you there if you receive him. If you accept him, I promise you, he will not leave you there. He'll redeem you immediately. He will change your life, your destination immediately 
The thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me when thou enterest into thy kingdom. He's hanging on a cross. He can't do no good works. He can't go get baptized. He can't go tie to a church. He's dying right now. And he looked to Jesus and said, would you remember me? And Jesus turned to him and said, today, <laughs> this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. From a cross, from a condemned state, from the community condemning him and hanging him on a cross. I mean, the entire community rejected this man. And Jesus said, I'll take him. <laughs> hey, that's me. That's me. And if that's you today, Jesus is calling. Right now, he's calling. Don't leave here lost. Don't die lost. Because he's just waiting for you to acknowledge. That church down there isn't trying to say they're better than you are. They're trying to show you a better way of living. They're trying to show you life in Christ. That church isn't trying to say that they're above you and you're below them. No, we're trying to tell you that there's a far greater Savior than what you've, what you've known in this world. Most people, their Savior is alcohol and drugs and all kind of uh, wicked living out there. But my Savior, my Savior is Jesus. And he hasn't failed me yet. As a matter of fact, he never will. Jesus didn't come looking for you to leave you where you are. He didn't come looking for you to leave you in your lost condition. He wants to impact your life both now and for all of eternity. Let's have heads bowed and eyes closed as we pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this time together around your word. Father, I pray that your word has touched our hearts, challenged us. Father, I pray if there's any here today, this morning, that's not saved. Father, that they'll sense the urgency, the need to repent of sin this very day, become born again. God, I pray for each and every one of us as members of Grace Bible Baptist Church and our guests that are with us that Father, we, we look to this lost world with compassion. Father, knowing that that's where we used to be. That's exactly where we used to be. God, I pray that you help us as we go forward to look on them with kindness, to look on them with compassion, with love, Show them the same grace that you showed us. Show them the same mercy that you showed us to love them. Father, those that may come in amongst us and get saved, not to expect them to miraculously immediately be on a level that they're not. But to love them and to work with them and to gradually, by your grace, watch them grow in grace. Help us, Father, as we seek to fulfill your will. May many come to know you as Lord and Savior before it's too late. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Let's all stand together. Brooklyn, could you end that for me? Let's stand together.